Hi, so I just wanted to talk a little bit about inductive and deductive reasoning. Actually, inductive reasoning, but you kind of can't really talk about inductive without talking about deductive, because they can be seen as two opposites, if you like. Deductive is kind of a top-down approach, and inductive is sort of a bottom-up approach. So there's a kind of um, mm, symmetry about them. Now, deductive reasoning is essentially where you make some kind of statement uh, that can be held to be true in all time and then make some kind of conclusion from those statements, and that equally is held to be true. There's a big problem with it in that if the statements are um, not actually applicable to the larger universe, they can in themselves lead to wrong reasoning. A good example of this is that... Um, Oh, I apologise if this comes across as rude, but a good example is uh, all men are clever, all women are not men, therefore all women are stupid. Um, that's often used as an example to show the fallacy of deductive reasoning. But deductive reasoning can be a very powerful tool, and Sherlock Holmes used it wonderfully, I guess. Um, but the one that we're really interested in is inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is essentially where you perform an infinite amount of experiments and get the same result. And from those results you can say, hey, this is true for all time. The obvious problem with that is it's only true for the experiments that you've performed. So to say that it's true for all time can lead you to wrong uh, conclusions. Because even though you perform an experiment a million times, it may or may not be correct when you form that, uh, perform that experiment the millionth and oneth time. But it's still taken to be true if, for a large number of experiments, it has shown to be true. And that's what the bottom-up uh, bottom approach is all about. Now, we do inductive reasoning all the time, actually. Every time you sit on a chair and it doesn't collapse under you, you're performing a, an experiment on that chair where you reason that that chair won't fall down. And the greater number of times that you do that, the more confidence you have in that that result is true for all time. So you don't test a chair before you sit on it. Mostly what you do is just plonk yourself down. And you can see the fallacy of it in that every now and then you'll plonk yourself on a chair, it'll break and you'll end up flattening your back on the floor. And that shows you that inductive reasoning is in itself flawed. But it's still taken to be a truism if you can inductively prove something, that is, either practically or theoretically perform a massive series of experiments to show it holds true, you can induce that it's true for all time. Anyway, that's kind of like the um, basic two methods of reasoning about things and uh, I hope you found it interesting and thank you for watching.